I don't consent. I don't leave. <laughs> I don't consent. All right, guys. So we're going to start off on DXY. Um, just to go over the process of how we do this uh, for some of you new guys in here is every Sunday we'll go over this. It's pretty much just the outlook for the week. We'll give you these two scenarios, bullish and bearish. And then we'll obviously let these play out through the week. You can come back to these analyses and use them to your advantage as some of these moves play out. And then we'll cover it again on Friday. So the Friday analysis is us going through the pairs, uh, kind of breaking down, you know, how we took the trades, where there were setups, if they played out or not. And uh, yeah, so we do that pretty much every week. So this is the one where we go into the potential setups for the week ahead. So we're going to start off on DXY. We always start on DXY. And how we break down these sessions is we'll go on the daily time frame to grab the trend, to grab the overall sentiment, right? And then we'll drop to the four hour and go over those um, potential setups because that's going to be the intra-week trend. That's where we're going to see moves kind of play out through the week ahead, uh, the four hour time frame. So that's usually the best for intra-week swing trading. Okay, so here we are on the daily. Um, we could see a clear level. This is clearly our biggest level right here, 91.5. Right, we've kind of bounced through it or we broke through it, we bounced off it. And the same, we got a higher low here, broke and retested, came back through, broke and retested, came back through again, broke and retested. So we're looking more bullish, you know, as we're above this level, this is kind of the main pivot level. As we're above it, we're looking more bullish. As we're below it, we're looking more bearish. Okay, so here clearly see, see a daily higher low. We then rallied to minor resistance, which is four hour resistance at 92.5, it's pulling back now. So let's go to the four hour and see if this little daily trend is gonna continue, if it's got the momentum, see what type of confirmations we can spot. So we can either gain more confidence in either of these setups, okay? So ultimately here we are, we're above this monthly zone. This is that higher low, price action pushed above, pulled back, consolidated here, and then continued to rally. So the volume is actually pretty good here. Let me zoom out a little bit. We'll get more of this trend in view. Okay, so the volume's pretty good. It has been. This is pretty much what you want to see after a major level is broken. You don't want to just see it wick once and then shoot off. The fact that we're seeing this type of consolidation and the market kind of flatline at this level gives us confidence of this new support level. So that's good. This is what we want to see, right? So we did push to a new high. This is good. It's pulling back. So now I really want to see a higher low, right? I want to see a higher low higher than this one and then some nice bullish confirmation pushing through this level that we could then potentially enter on um, or well that we would then be bullish on the dollar with that we could enter on other pairs uh, with that sentiment. So yeah, definitely looking bullish. These are the two scenarios. It's either going to drop a little bit from a higher low like this, potentially come all the way down to here again. Um, this is definitely the last level of support. So if this were to break, it would, um, you know, definitely turn our bias more bearish. Okay. So this is a possibility. It's going to pull back, give us a higher low and then continue higher, or it's going to keep rallying um, with this bullish momentum. So that means we'll get above 92.5, and then we'll look for the higher lows to confirm this as a, a continuation higher. So both uh, both scenarios, you know, are pretty much bullish here. You know, it's definitely uh, more bullish as long as we're above the monthly. So just keep that in mind. Okay, but yeah, look at, looking pretty good on DXY. A little slow right now, um, but, you know, maybe we'll see some, some volume pick up uh, tomorrow morning, later tonight. We'll see. But, but let's move over bearish. to our it's pretty bearish. Yeah, it's definitely gonna. So let's go back to that actually for one second. So because of this rejection, MA cross is definitely looking bearish. So mm -hmm. I feel like it's gonna fall for higher low. But you know, if it does break, we're still looking for higher lows, which indicates an uptrend mm -hmm. on this higher time frame anyway. So let's go over to AU first tradable pair. We have a question. See, this guy just can't hear, but you got to just turn on your uh, your audio for Zoom. Yeah. Fortunately, we all have audio difficulties sometimes. Yeah, but we got to move to YouTube. We got to start doing yeah. lives. Right. Actually, yeah. What do you guys think about that? If we transition these all over to YouTube lives, I think that would make more sense. Definitely. Um, so AUD USD here. We're on the daily time frame. Okay, now we know we were bullish for a while, very strong trend, and then we had a high volume range. So, so resistance was up here at 078, support was down at 076, 200 pip range, that's, that's pretty wide, right? And then we had fake outs included in that. So essentially this is just consolidation, the market's moving sideways, there were trades within this range, 
but you can see that there's a transition to the downside. We started getting lower highs here. We broke major support levels after even more consolidation. So tighter consolidation, as you can see here. And then we started to drop. And after this past lower high here, we blew all the way through a weekly at 0.76, right there. And then we retested, confirmed the lower high, perfect reversal, and now it's dropping again. So let's go down to the four hour. We know we're bearish on the daily. We're bearish on the four hour, or are we? It's pulling back. So ultimately, higher time frame, we're bearish. So we're not going to buy it on a four hour pullback. We're waiting for another lower high. So there's good momentum here, right? These are, these are pretty dramatic pullbacks and then a pretty dramatic impulse move. Good volume on this correction as well. So let's, you know, if this momentum continues, this would be a great spot for a lower high right after structure forms. And then we'll look to target lower down towards, you know, significant support levels. New lower low would find ourselves around the negative 27 Fib level and uh, 074. So definitely, definitely a good target. And this is looking pretty likely, you know, it's pulling back. We'll see how it reacts at this area, but this is the most likely opportunity because we're below the weekly. And as price action is below this weekly on the daily, it shows that we're primarily bearish. Okay. So that's the whole kind of logic behind this here. We're waiting for this to pull back, waiting for price action to show us something and then confirmations to enter on. Okay. So this looks very clear. This lines up with uh, uh, DXY pretty well. So, We'll see if this plays out or if the opposite plays out, right? Let's say this goes bullish. What needs to happen for us to consider long opportunities? Which simply higher lows above this weekly here at 076. And then we would target towards key resistance right here, which was the main support for this consolidation back here. So 07675, that would be a good target. Okay, so two decent scenarios, the blue, blue trade path being the most likely. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it plays out. This is probably going to take a few more candles. So, so maybe tomorrow or um, in the afternoon or something, we'll see this start to move a bit more. All right, so that's AU. Let's move on to AJ. It's going to be similar. This one's actually showing us a pattern. So it's a little more clear even. But let's go to the daily time frame for a second. Just assess the trend. Very bullish in the past, we can see. Bit of consolidation, which lines up with AU. We just looked at this one doesn't have uh, as clear of a range. You know, a little more fake outs here. Uh, you know, more consolidation above uh, broken resistance, new support. So it's just been consolidating, kind of doing its own thing. And you know, like we saw in AU, massive drop after um, you know the last lower high. Massive, massive drop. It shot all the way down to 82.2, which is still technically support and pulled back, gave us a lower high. And now it looks like it's right at our main support level at 83.25, which is our weekly. So we're gonna need to go to the four hour to get a better look. But it does look like this is a massive transition here, even though we did wick off support, definitely looking pretty bearish, but let's go to the four hour real quick. See what this time frame is telling us. Okay, so yeah, we're dancing around this key level, right around this weekly, uh, which isn't, isn't the greatest, you know, you typically want to see a nice lower high formation after a break or a nice higher low formation after a break to the upside. This, the pattern is kind of just forming right on this level. So we're just going to play the pattern to be the most conservative, right? So ideally we want to see this pattern continue, right? This is a nice impulse move. This is technically a correction, also consolidation because the pattern itself. So if we see a push lower break of the pattern and support itself, that would be perfect. And then we're looking for, you know, to enter on quick rejection, enter on a nice lower high, and then we're targeting back down towards 82.2. So this looks pretty good. I mean, I have, I have a good amount of confidence in this. If I see it start to break and uh, see all the confirmations, you know, we look for it, that'd be absolutely perfect. But what needs to happen for us to consider this bullish? That would need to be a bullish break of this pattern, obviously. And then ideally 83.8 would need to be broken higher or low above that then we could start looking at, uh, you know, more long, long opportunities targeting 84.4, potentially higher. But, um, but yeah, definitely bearish right now. I mean, it's just so much bearish momentum, lower high after lower high after lower high. So, you know, we'll see how this plays out. Again, it's going to need a little bit more time um, for us to get, you know, a clear idea of where it's going to go. But that's AJ. Let's move on to UJ, daily time frame. Okay, this one's super bullish as well. Uh, it's as, as expected though, you know, DXY has been rallying for a little bit. So UJ has been following very bullish, huge, huge rally here. 
kind of overextended, could fall quite a bit and still be considered bullish. Um, so let's go to the four hour, see what's going on here. Zoom out a little bit. Okay. There we go. All right, cool. So very bullish. We have a fib on this, this bullish leg right here. We pulled back after 111.5. We got an MA cross. Right now we're at the 61.8. And right now it looks like it does, it is going to fall a little bit lower. But, uh, you know, if you want to short this, the best opportunity I would spot would be, you know, catching maybe a rejection off 111.5 again. Just a lower high is what you want to see. Uh, and then it could definitely drop all the way down to uh, 110.3, 110.10 before we see any other, you know, reaction of price action at this level. Cause this thing, it could fall quite a bit and still be bullish. So, you know, just keep that in mind. And again, it's below one, one eleven five. So definitely looking kind of bearish right now, but what needs to happen for us to enter long on this again, until we see some sort of reversal or higher low, we're not looking at longs um, until we see, or until we see a break completely like this blue trade path here. And then you see a higher low above uh, 11.5 and then we could target higher so let's look at chat for a second okay cool he's on top of it so yeah very bullish a bit overextended so just keep in mind this could definitely be a, a big correction and then you can even see something like this so let's just take this a step further and we could see it fall on the four hour here find support here reverse and then continue with the daily bullish trend Okay, so just keep that in mind. As the four-hour turns bearish, you know, we're looking for our next major support levels. And then, yeah, right here, that's the next one. So we'll see. We'll see. Is DXY done rallying? <laughs> you know, we never know, guys. We never know. It's whatever the Fed wants to do this week. Print a billion dollars. It's been pretty, like, one week's, you know, last couple of weeks has been one week USD strong, one week USD weak. It's been pretty, yeah. pretty inconsistent. It's definitely been noticeable this past like month or so, guys. Like the dollar is just so dominant. Just been moving like like flatline. This was a whole week of consolidation. Then we had a whole week of rallying. So yeah, it's really the XY is really moving the market, guys. And um, yeah, if it's flatlining, you're not gonna see much movement. If it's you know moving with big volume, you're gonna see all the majors go crazy. And that's how it's been. That's just pretty much it. So uh, next pair, EJ. Overall, very, very bullish. We have been for, yeah, just a long ass time uh, until we got to resistance at 132.7. Price action started to stall here, started to reverse. We saw what looked like a head and shoulders right here. If you guys can see this left shoulder, head, right shoulder, right at the weekly, pretty much the neckline right there. It broke it with huge bearish momentum, came back up, gave us a lower high. And now we're kind of going sideways, but it's definitely looking more bearish. So, we're bearish on the daily. Let's go to the four hour, see what's going on. Okay, so a bit of consolidation. So this is just a bit of consolidation here. Let me just highlight this. This isn't a pattern. It's not, it's more or less just an area where price action is bouncing, right? Which means it hasn't truly chosen its direction. Now we do have the help of this resistance level at 132 right here. So you can see how price action is bouncing. So this is a nice zone because if we get a lower high right below this level, that's good confirmation. Lower high above, not so much. So that's one thing this hasn't done yet. So this would be really, really nice to see. If it pulls back, finally gives us the lower high below 132 flat and then drops, enter on some strong bearish confirmations, uh, bearish setups, and then we're targeting lower towards 0%, right around 130 flat. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. It's looking pretty good. Just gotta, you really need those confirmations because yeah, you don't want to get caught off sides here or something. This would have been a shitty pullback to kind of ride through, even though it is rejecting the 200 EMA. It just would have stuck. So you really want to be sure. Make sure you're entering on the right conviction candle or the real conviction candle, and then you can get into a nice trade, little to no drawdown. So this would be perfect if it followed this. But um, if it goes bullish, we'll be looking for higher lows above this level, something this also has not done well. Right? It broke higher. Didn't really give us a higher low. Didn't even come back and really test 132 flat until over here, but then this was just weak as hell. So, you know, that's what we'll be looking for on either side of this level uh, to, uh, to catch a good trade. Okay. So that's EJ. Let's move on to gold. Famous gold, man. <laughs> this one's been kind of going sideways. Sad to say guys. I mean, 
Gold's been kind of the hero the last few months, been moving so well. But um, yeah, this this kind of sucks. This past week was pretty much sideways. But again, if you look at DXY, you know, same thing. Pretty much was consolidating right at that new support level. Um, so you know, obviously, as you guys know, XAU, DXY, very inversely correlated, which means that the dollar goes up, gold will drop, which is highlighted perfectly in this recent drop right here. You guys can see this. That was directly related to the dollar rally. So we're definitely bearish on the daily, as we can see. Lower high, lower high, lower high, lower lows, right? Across the board here. So definitely bearish. And the main level that we had to keep in mind with gold here is 1800. Because if we look to the left, as long as we we're above this level in the past, we we're generally bullish, huge rejection, right? Huge demand zone there. So we're breaking below it, which means that we're generally bearish. We're looking for shorts. We're looking for lower highs. You know, this is a bit overextended if you think about it, but essentially we're just looking for this to kind of reverse here and then shoot to the downside with this same type of you know, energy here, right? We want to see a nice engulfing. We want to see a big amount of bearish vo uh, volume uh, that would give us confidence below 1800. Okay, so simply that's really it. That's what we're looking for there. Um, I know somebody in chat when I posted this earlier said this is a head and shoulders. Now, technically, if you look at it, yes, it could resemble it. But one thing you want to keep in mind is the volume, guys. This is not, this is a shitty excuse for a left shoulder. Same with this as a right shoulder. Good excuse for a head, but it's just, you know, you can't force patterns. So this is literally just big volume, you know, just continuation patterns within, not really head and shoulders. Okay, so we're looking for that same type of continuation like we saw over here, just the opposite side. Consolidation, then it takes off. Consolidation, then it drops. So we'll see. Um, for us to consider, you know, long scenarios on gold, really it would need to, we would really want to see higher lows up here closer to 1900, um, just because of, how much of a resistance level this is in here. Price action has just kind of bounced in this area for a while. It's shown that this level is held multiple times. So to be conservative, I'd like to see a higher low up there. However, you could definitely find some lower time frame uh, opportunities if, if you could see like a one hour bullish trend start to take place or uh, you know even a 30 minute if you're you know a scalper or just lower time frame trader. But just, it, just keep in mind, you know, it could definitely pull back all the way to here and still be bearish, right? Because this is where the last lower high was technically on the daily. So just keep that in mind. But uh, it's definitely looking looking more bearish than anything else right now. Right, and I did this analysis on the daily too, because if you look to the four hour, you, ju you just need the larger picture. All you're looking at here is an impulse move with consolidation. You know, yeah, we want to see the consolidation break. That's a great indication, but Really, this is a, as of right now, a, a daily chart. You know, we got to wait for this to show us something a little more significant. Okay. But um, yeah, that's, that's what I got for you guys. Cover DXY, AU, AJ, UJ, EJ, and gold. Again, you guys can go back into Telegram. These charts are active all week. Or yeah, so if you open up the trading view, you hit the play button and it shows you like how are the trades progressing. You know, if I'm full of shit and I really don't know what I'm talking about or if, <laughs> Trades actually follow my, you know, the, the analysis and if, if it works out. So, yeah, guys, you have access to that. Definitely a big tool. But, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. So, thanks. You get to see uh, Angel, uh, Trader in the Wild now. Trader doing in the it Wild. All, <clears throat> doing it all live. All right, let's see. <clears throat> I'm bringing this up. I just ordered uh, some fucking lamb, dude. Oh, yeah? See what See what that's made of. Yeah, see what that's see what that's all about. I got this like Uber Eats, Uber Eats gift gift card right. or some or it's like they send you those random promotions like twenty dollars off or something. Right. Something hey, man. I don't know if I ever would have ordered lamb through Uber Eats, but it's, it's right? Miami. It's this restaurant, this restaurant's got four and a half stars. So I mean, oh, okay. I'm hoping, uh, hoping we, you know, don't end up dying tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I do tomorrow. <laughs> When's it coming? Oh, fucking nine o'clock. Ian Lamb. Yeah, no problem, guys. Yeah. No problem. All right, let's. Uh, so, like I said, I don't even have most of my analysis done because pretty much we're just gonna just gonna do it live, guys. So I'm gonna pull up the MT4 and we'll see if there's any trades. That are good for the week considering what my schedule has been like i've just been swing trading 
uh, for the week or for the last like three weeks. Um, right now in the account, I'm up 5.5%. So all the trades have been taken on the in these calls. So we're going to go ahead and we'll take some other trades if they're there. I know one of the weeks I literally didn't even take a trade because there was nothing. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We'll see if we get anything. So let's start with NZD USD. I'm just trying to see if this is the chart I normally do my analysis on. One second, guys. We're still doing the uh, trading with the VWAP on the live session. So one of our members, Brian, he's leading the live, the live sessions now inside of the signal room. So that's the intraday strategy. I personally haven't been trading it as much because I haven't been able to hop on during the New York session. But if you guys do want to trade live uh, again with one of our one of our members, he's quite effective with it. Um, so that is in the signal room. But we're going to go ahead. We're just going to look at swing some swing trades. I'm going to cover the major pairs. So we're going to start with NZD USD and we're pretty much just going to bring it from the beginning. So let me just take off this, clear some of this stuff up and we'll bump up to the weekly. So what I'll always do, just come onto the weekly time frame, kind of just one look here. How did last week play out? Where, where kind of we overall with structure <clears throat> and everything like that. As I zoom out, I have this level marked here. This is definitely a significant zone down here. We've got support here, resistance here. And then as you can see, price is, isn't there yet, but it looks as though we could be heading down into this zone. I really only want to buy once price does get down into this area, then I know that price is an area where it could reverse off of pretty aggressively. Looking at last week, we had this, um, not exactly a spinning top or like a doji or anything, the wick to the upside is pretty small, but still, you know, this is kind of a reversal candle here. It's telling me that price shot up, found resistance, struggled to break, you know, through the resistance. Now we could see some downward momentum, but like Nick went over on his chart, the dollar does not look as though it's going to be too strong this week. You know, if the dollar did gain strength, that would mean NZD USD would most likely push to the downside here. So let's just make our way down time frames let's go down to the daily time frame we don't really want to overcomplicate things too much we want to look at where are our main zones i have this zone marked right here we had resistance support support resistance resistance now we're coming back into that resistance level although we did form this higher low point right here so i'm not as confident as i was previously we originally got in on this trade last week it went down about 100 pips. I closed down here, but we were still maintaining this because we were looking to swing trade this realistically. The only reason I closed it was NFP. I closed it before that because I didn't want to have what happened. As we can see on uh, Friday, we had NFP happen, shot up right after it came out. You know, Then it continued to shoot higher. So that's what I was trying to avoid. I closed it right around here. So I didn't get all of it, but we did get some of that trade. So as it's coming back now, we're down on the four hour time frame. Uh, quite simply, we want to look, you know, where is our structure? It's very simple. We've got some higher, some lower highs and lower lows down here. Now what's throwing us off is we just made this higher, higher low point right here. So price struggled to break below this area, six, nine or six, seven, no, too much. Six, nine, 500. So we struggled to break below there for whatever reason, if we zoom out, so we can kind of see right here, this was this previous low point. So once price hit this, it just started to reverse back to the upside. So obviously it found some significant support there. So I'm pretty much looking for one of two things. Let's see, double bottom. Yeah, I mean, you could definitely, definitely say that's a, you know, a four hour double bottom. This is certainly a double bottom. And then this one, you know, didn't come all the way down to retest this zone, but you could certainly still say it retested a previous area of support. This is also um, certainly, if we're talking about zones, you know, you could also mark this down as a demand zone as well. 
Hold on, kind of change this up. So we can definitely mark this down as like a demand zone too. So price obviously hit an area that had a lot of liquidity. I'm not marking all this on my chart because I don't want a thousand things on my chart. You know, I can clearly tell, okay, price hit a support level. Yeah, it was a double bottom. Like at this point, I'm not going to mark everything up because I'd rather have, I'd rather have everything just be super clean. You know, where are my main levels that I'm looking at? I have this for this uh, daily level. Let's bump up to the daily that we just went over, you know, resistance, support, support, resistance, resistance. So what this is telling me is that as price comes into this level and test this area, this is now our next area to potentially sell from. So this would be our Fibonacci right here. We've got this and we've got this. And because of the fact that we have this higher low right here, I'm not going to sell this immediately. Normally, you know, I would just look for three confirmations, look for two confirmations, and I would just start to sell. This is what it would look like if I were to sell right now. Again, this is a swing trade. So remember, where, where would we target? We target a negative 27. Also, this is that support area that we're expecting price to bounce off of anyway. So this would be kind of what the trade would look like. We'd be shorting here. We'd be targeting down here. It's a swing trade. You know, you could even hug this the stops a bit tighter. But if you wanted to be like super conservative, you could put it above the support here, above the 78.6, above this lower high point. That would probably be pretty advisable. I'm just going to bring in this trend line as well. So as we can see, pretty much there's going to be two scenarios here on how this is going to go down. We are either going to find resistance at this at this level at the 70500 mark. And I'll I'll type all this up afterwards and post it um, in uh, trading view. That way you guys can follow it throughout the week. So we've got this 706570 700. Move this up right here. So we've got this area, obviously, you know, price has found resistance here before. If we end up breaking this, I'm just going to move this over. Yeah, Sim, that's, that's probably right. If it does play out in that, in that bear scenario, you could catch a nice double top among other confirmations. Double yep. top on the downtrend. Yeah. So what I'm looking at is we have this trend is certainly bearish, you know, have the trend line in play right there. We've got this previous lower high. We've got the resistance. We've got the 61.8. So we've got a ton of uh, confluence here, a ton of confirmations. Ultimately, if price manages to break above here, you're most likely then going to see a long opportunity. So we're going to have two potential scenarios here. We're going to have scenario number one, which is going to be the short idea. And then the long idea is a little bit more ways away. But this could certainly become the trade of the week if this thing does break out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because of the fact this higher low was formed and because we're already like testing this trend line so closely, I'm going to wait until we get some sort of conviction candle. Much like this, we got an engulfing over here. We had this engulfing. Even over here, we had this little engulfing up here. We have an evening star here you know some price action confirmation so i'm not going to get too aggressive with this i'm just going to wait you know if it hits that engulfing at the resistance short it right away stops up here you know targets down there we'll go in going for the swing trade um if this thing does if this thing does manage uh to break the resistance you know I remember we're on the four hours so this would probably take this would probably take like a day or two for this to break. And I might not take this trade. This is a trade that you guys can take. You know, it'll, the analysis is going to be out there. It's going to be available. You guys can come look at the chart, see if it's breaking out, take it on the retest. I personally might not take this trade because I just might not be looking with the, with my schedule. I've been trying to just take trades on Sundays. That way I can just let it coast for the whole week. And right now there's no trade. There's no trade. I'm not going to force a trade. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll check tomorrow or Wednesday 
once Wednesday night comes, I don't necessarily want to start swing training for the week. Then, then I'm considering holding it over the weekend and stuff like that. So then it becomes a little bit uh, different of an opportunity. Let's see here. So yeah, that's my NZD USD idea. I'll type it up uh, the weekly and the four hour, what I'm looking at and why. Um, we had our analysis on USEP last week. This is how it played out. We had a short idea, got invalidated. I got stopped on it. And then we had a long idea that ended up hitting. So we had two directions. Let's go ahead and just clear all this up though. Because obviously we're in a much different position right now. So let's take all this off. We don't even need this. And let's just do what we always do. Start on the weekly time frame. So starting on the weekly, this is exactly what I wanted to see. This idea is going to be a little bit different than NU because this is looking as though it's going to be in line with uh, the dollar index potentially. So we've got support here. We've got support here. We've got resistance here. This obviously pushed up a bit higher, but this is certainly a solid level here. Let's just bring out a little tag. And so we've got 9,300. So let's just round number it up. We've got 9,300 level right here. This is a serious resistance level. As you can see, we already came up last week and wicked it. So we wicked it. This is like an inverted hammer candle. So it is, you know, sort of a reversal candle after a bearish push. We're at the top right now. So it's not as meaningful. Um, so let's go down to the four hour and see what's going on. The fact that this was already tested to me tells me that we could now see that push to the downside. And just because that's like my confirmation, it got tested. That's the area I was looking for to get tested. It wicked out, dropped significantly. Okay. Now I'm not going to fuck around. You know, I'm going to look for confirmations that would allow me to get into a short idea because that's what my bias is right now. So I'm just going to mark this up. We've got this zone. This is based on this resistance support. So we've got two sides of the market where price rejected this area. So I'm pretty much just looking for shorts as price comes up into this area. I'm looking for shorts as price comes up into there. This is going to become a more aggressive style trade. If I were to fib this, you know, we obviously have our fib levels there. We got to bring this down a little bit. We ultimately be targeting this 618 right here. And then I would just move this really above the 78.6. If price manages to, if price manages to actually break this resistance level, we don't want to really be in this trade. It's going to shoot back into this liquidity zone. It's going to try to grab it again. Um, so we want to keep our stops in that sense, you know, right around this area, maybe even a bit tighter. Um, now we want to utilize the aggressive risk strategy that we teach in the course, pretty much if price breaks above here and find support in this area, that's when you're going to exit. You're, you're not going to exit as soon as price. We're not going to exit as soon as price shoots above the level which is right here, we're going to enter here or we're going to exit here. So this is just this risk strategy that we teach inside the signal room, inside the course. Yeah, price breaks here. It could just shoot up to the stop loss. We planned it. We planned anyway, you know, to potentially lose the trade. We put risk on. But the best way to get, a, get about uh, minimizing the drawdown, minimizing the loss would be to wait for that first higher low, wait for the retest of the liquidity zone. This is the zone. So if price breaks above here, we would then exit there before um, getting out of this trade. So this is pretty much the idea. Obviously, you know, we're not in the trade. We don't got to worry about that for now. Once price just comes into this area, if it shows any sign of rejection, that's kind of how aggressive I'm going to be with this trade. And I'm going to actually set an alert on this. Uh, this is one that I'll take. Um, like tomorrow, you know, it could, it could shoot up tonight. It looks like it's going to move up into that area. So let me see, I'll put an alert, move it down a little bit. 
So yeah, that's my trade idea, Yousef. See if it pops up. Obviously, if price does break this resistance level, it is heading to 93. It is going to head back where the liquidity is, which is up in that zone. So we can very we can confidently say that if price breaks here, that we're then going to shoot up. So this would be trade idea numero dos. So just know your zones, know what you're targeting. I'm going to target up here right around 93. I'm going to actually put it up here at 93. At this point, my stops, we would at that point take off the fibs, flip everything. My stops would be like right around here, 2.5 right there. So that's trade idea number two. So pretty much we'll just see how this zone reacts. If this breaks, we're going long. This holds, we are very confidently going to go short. Just move this over. Again, I'll post this one up in the uh, in trading view. I'll post it in Discord and Telegram. Let's take a look now. Damn, dude, you're taking a long ass time with my lamb chops. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> it says nine ten delivery, but shit ain't even on the way. Perfection, man. Shit ain't even on the way. You ever just watch the Uber fucking? Yeah, the, one, uh, it's gonna be out here getting fucking anxiety. Yeah, watching this shit nine ten. We're ordering lamb chops again. Fucking hell. All right, let's see, let's see what's up next. We did NU, we did Yousef. Let's cover this one next. GU. Let's bump up. So it's actually good because we have two different ideas. We have NU, which is we're trying to go short on realistically so if the dollar does pump let's get back down to here so if the dollar starts to pump this thing's going to go down now if the dollar starts to get weak you know then we got Yousef ready to go short let's go next to GU this thing certainly is still in a downtrend let's just start on the weekly like we always do and this is not what we want to see so the weekly time frame Last week we got into a short, we went up. Let's see how many pips, how many pips we got a lot, 150. <laughs> a theme song. 154. <laughs> so we went up 154 pips. I mean, don't get confused about that though, guys. 154 pips is a lot, but it's more about the risk reward. So we were only up about 1.5 percent on that trade so we were maintaining it i got out of it just because of nfp as we could see nfp on uh, friday shot this thing up so it was advisable to get out of that trade um but anyway now we're back i'm just going to delete this because we're not in the position anymore let's take this off because that was from last week let's kind of do this whole thing whole thing over again so let's remove this level Let's even take away this level and let's just bump. I mean, we could really just remove everything. We'll just go up to the weekly time frame, kind of see where we're at. A couple of weeks ago, for y'all that, that watched the calls, we had this short idea all the way from the top. Up here. This thing, yeah, this looks good, man. Look how high this thing is. It's a key resistance. We've seen that it's rejected before and then fell off a cliff. Mm -hmm. Oh, we'll see. Yep. And now, well, now what we're seeing is, so up here we were shorting it. Now we're back in this area, which is some sort of support level. So it's just, we have like this zone right here. We can even scroll back a bit. So this is obviously a support level. This shit has not broken forever. Yeah, this is a big level. Damn. This is probably, this is like a really strong, a strong daily, probably. What is this? One, one, eight, zero. So yeah, we have this zone, which is definitely a serious fucking level. Yeah, or maybe, yeah probably it's a higher time frame zone. Too. For sure. <laughs> so that's good. So it's very clear as to what the opportunities are here. Yeah, I mean, we have the support level, guys. Obviously, it broke above here recently. Look how it rejected this level, 
once, twice. So we're kind of trading now in this zone. We're trading between these two, uh, you know, support and resistance levels, just bouncing up, down, up, down. So at this point, you know, what is price action telling us? We have the spinning top candle. We have an inverted hammer, two reversal signals. So it is very likely that this thing is now going to push to the upside. And that's literally 350 pips away. So let's gear up, you know, for this move. Let's come down to the four hour. We can't just take this trade. We've got to kind of make sense of this. And this would be what I call making sense of it because of the fact that it hit the liquidity zone. We're going to just zoom in a little bit more and I'm just going to mark down. This is kind of my trends. Could even mark it from here, support, resistance, support, resistance. And then we started to get a little choppy down here. This is when that doji candle formed or the spinning top. And now, this is where we're at. So let's just delete or hide this. So when we're talking about a trend, this trend was bearish, forming lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower low, lower high, boom, boom, boom. Then we had this like the end of it, which was kind of not exactly a wedge, but it was losing that steam. And then we had. This level break, ultimately now this level broke. We can delete this. So just like we teach it in the course, just like anyone teaches market structure, break, retest, you know, now you're looking to go long. So let's bring this back on. So this is going to be realistically the potential opportunity for GU, I don't really like longing it now. It's just not at a higher low. We're just gonna let it fuck around a little bit more. I would love for it to do something like this, where price ends up shooting higher and then pulling back and then going to the upside. So if you were to take this trade literally right now, this would be the trade. You'd have to put your stop loss pretty much down here. And what would you have to target? You know, target one. Let's just zoom out a little bit. Target one would be here. Target two would be here. And then ultimately target three would be back at that resistance all the way up there. So what I'm going to do is it's not, it's not really the best trade idea. This closes in seven minutes. What I do like is we're coming up to this resistance we rejected it and then the following candle is an engulfing, right? So we're testing the support level, showing an engulfing candle. So depending how this closes, I might just say fuck it and take a trade on this. And then again, this would be level one. This would be level two. And then ultimately TP3 would be you know, back up, all the way back up to that level. So also super close to a head and shoulders type of pattern, but the right shoulder, however, didn't come down far enough. Yeah, that's why I'm thinking, close. you know, we could see some more uh, retracement, but. I like that projection where it really clears the zone, then pulls back for a really probable higher low scenario. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, it's, we're gonna, you know, we'll see. All about confirmations, guys. All about confirmations. Yeah, I mean, there's not a lot of liquidity in the in the market right now. But what I'm gonna do is, see. I'm gonna take a, a half percent position. So I'm not gonna go one percent. I'm just gonna take half percent. Let's go. Gu. We've got sixty five. We're going for a buy. So it's actually good that he's doing this live, guys, because this is the exact process we kind of do behind the scenes when we're setting up this analysis for you guys. 
literally exactly how he's doing it. Starts in the higher time frame. We work our way down, focus on the four hour for the swing trading. And then we choose our targets exactly the same way, you know, based on the relevant SR levels for the time frames that we're trading, usually based on the four hour or daily. So yeah, pretty good. We're, so yeah, I've got my trade, my trade in. We're gonna see how it plays out. There's five minutes left. There's actually a lot of news coming out. We have this coming out. Tomorrow we've got the PMI news. Um, so yeah, I'm only gonna put half a percent on this one and we'll see how it shakes out. But this one is, uh, you know, does have some confirmations. We got the support level. We hit that liquidity zone on the weekly time frame, which I like. We're now getting this like potential bullish engulfing. We already had a break of structure on this. Um, so yeah, that's GU. Let's bump over to UCAD. We can clear some of this up from last week. It's actually just clearing all this up. Let's go up to the weekly. Let's see where this food's at. Oh, it's on the way. Fucking beautiful. Not bad, dude. Sasha. Yeah. Sasha's delivering it. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh shit. All right. All right. Um we've got the weekly time frame. Let's just zoom out a bit. Okay, so we've got this level right here. And I'll go over what this is based on in a second. So we've got this area. Maybe I'll bring out the trusty old brush tool. So we had all the support, all this resistance, support, support, even a little minor kind of uh, consolidation around the zone right there. And then we had support and then we had resistance. So that's everything that I'm looking for when I look down a zone. We've got, you know, what, one, two, three, four, five, six times that this thing uh, found support or resistance in this area. So when price comes back into that zone, I am most likely, you know, it's most likely going to reject, it's most likely going to find the liquidity. Um, and this thing is certainly in a little bit of a downtrend. If we look at the daily time frame, kind of just zoom out, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more, let me mark this out. Yeah, and like Nick said, I mean, this is literally what I would be doing, preparing the analysis for you guys. Normally on Sundays, we took yesterday off because of obviously Independence Day. Um, but yeah, this this is pretty much what, we, what we'd be doing. So daily time frame. clearly it's in a downtrend. I'm not gonna use this trend line as like a, you know, end all be all as like, I don't really use trend lines as like confirmation. I just use it to see momentum. Yes. Yeah, so you're saying a little cup. Pat I don't personally ever really trade cup patterns at all. Um, but what I am seeing here is price very clearly. It hit our liquidity zone, a little double top. We have that engulfing. Now we have this inverted hammer. So it's kind of on the comeback now. I'm going to be yep. looking to, to really short this thing. And I'm going to look for it to hit this level. And that this is the, this is going to be the trade. This is going to be the trade of the week. Yeah, this, hold on, I'll fix this up in a second. So basically what I'm looking at is when I, whenever I get kind of a liquidity zone hit, I come down to the four hour and I look, was there a break of support? Look at this very clear break of support. That was that daily engulfing candle. And then we had, you know, the came back, retested engulfing. So that's great. But I think the best possible price to get this at is up here, just based on this being support. It hasn't retested that yet. It could just dump now, but I do think it's going to come up a bit higher. Um, so what I would want to do if we want to start to get targets is I would fib this, you know, if I'm trying to short it up there, I don't necessarily need stops all the way up there. I just gotta look and see what my targets would be. This would kind of be my TP1. And then this would ultimately, let me just zoom out. 
getting back down kind of into this area would ultimately be like the real swing trading idea. Um, so yeah, this would be idea number one. Price comes up in here, finds resistance, try to swing trade it to the downside. Let's just move all this over because this could play out more immediately. And then idea number two, let's just take this off. Idea number two, I don't really have an idea number two on this one. I don't necessarily want to take longs if this level breaks. You know, I don't, you could, I just don't love how the momentum's bearish, the trend line's there. You know, you, you still have potential for this to reverse even up here. So it's just not a great kind of scenario number two. So I'm just working with scenario number one, you know, looking for the retest. It's already pretty weak. So it could just start to fall from here, realistically. It's forming this uh, spinning top candle right here. So it could just honestly start to go right now. I'm just not going to take that trade because I want, I want the price that I want to get it at. This to me is, you know, a price that is more in demand. Let me bring this on real quick. Um, so this is going to be a price for me that is going to be a little bit stronger. I'm just going to use this. We had these two days that consolidated. So we really have this zone right here. This is a strong zone. So all this is, it shows the volume for the for uh, each day for each session. And as you can see here, session volume was strong between these two price points. This is when it was the strongest in this at this center. Um, so we obviously marked down this based on that was the support level where the bodies of the candles close. So yeah, if this comes into this zone, this is the trade going short, UCAD, you know, lines up, we'll be on GU, we're going long, you know, so lines up with GU going long. So we'll see if, if GU fucks around, you know, if GU comes back down, Ultimately, that, that this is what Nick was talking about. You know, GU basically does one of these. It's a very sloppy head and shoulders pattern, but it would basically be like if GU actually came back down more towards the left shoulder, then this would be like a nice high probability area to take, uh, you know, to take longs off of right there. So yeah, just shy of it. It's yep. close, good attempt, but not there yet. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're going to, for now, you know, we'll get in this one. If this does come up, you know, say GU gets stopped out, we'll probably th then get this short opportunity. Um, so yeah, that's UCAD. And then last but not least, let's cover GJ. So this is an interesting one. Let's take this off. Let's kind of, this is still kind of in play. This was a trade from last week. We shorted it on the live, as you can see here, Sunday. Sunday night, we shorted it. It moved down, you know, 130 pips, which was about one to one. We moved our stops to break even, and then it came back up. Now it's just kind of fucking around. So let's just take all this off and let's just do like a fresh kind of analysis here and see what's going on. Let's zoom out. So we're at these weekly high points. Right here. So this is definitely where price, you know, found support, found resistance. Now we just found resistance again. I'm like not even going to put that on though. I'm actually just going to have it be a little bit higher. I'm just going to put it up here. So we've got that level. And then as I zoom in a little bit more, just look at GJ, how bullish it's been for all of this time. Get this off. All of this time, it's been bullish. Almost a year, you know, it headed in this bullish trend. And we just came down to the resistance right here, found support. Now we just came up. You know, what are we looking at now? Last week had this doji candle. So that's a reversal candle, large wick. So it's like, shit, this, could this thing be headed to the downside? You know, let's go down to the lower time frame. Look at the trends. The trend overall is pretty bearish. That's why we shorted this last week. So this is very clearly 
the trend here. I'm just gonna map some of this out. Don't have to, you know, be fucking. Don't have to be Albert Einstein here to see it's it's in a downtrend. So now we're in this, you know, potential area. Could this reverse from here? I don't know. You know, I don't love this zone too much now. Going back to let's go back to last week because last week this was an area that I shorted it from. So let's see. It's today the fifth. That's correct. So this goes back to the second, the first. Going. So last week was the 27th when it started. So this was the idea last week. It was like, okay, we broke support, retest as resistance, got this engulfing. Let's go short. And it came down, you know, got, got into a nice trade. Now it's coming back up. And sometimes when I do this, it does give me an idea and it kind of is right now. So I'm noticing this zone right here. All right, so this is basically gonna be the play on GJ. GJ is either gonna be a break and retest this is this is probably the more likely scenario right now and i wouldn't answer right now because we just got this inverted hammer candle like to go short but that would be scenario number two because obviously it's still pretty bearish that would be scenario number two Let's see where this food's at oh we're chilling Josh is coming through She's pulling up heavy. <laughs> Rightfully so. Yeah, for real. <laughs> and then we've got the break. Three. All right, so if this thing breaks, retests this level, we're going long. If it shows us an engulfing or any sort of rejection right now, we are going short. And we're going to put our resistance right above this zone. We've got our resistance level. We got this resistance level as well. So we can kind of hug stops a little bit closer. If we wanted to be more conservative, we could then do this. So if we get any sort of rejection off of this area, and why am I making this decision? It's pretty clear. It's just based on the fact that price has either respected this level or rejected this level. Whenever it hits this level, whatever price this is, we've got 153. Let me move it up. Yeah, so like 153.6, whatever, not the, you know, not the prettiest number here. But whenever price comes into this zone, um, oh, that's not that's not it, Chief. Like 650. 650 or seven. Yeah, that's, we'll do 650. 650, you know, at, at, well, this is the level, you know, price is coming into. So for rejects here, short, breaks here, long. That's our trade idea on GJ. So only trade being given out on the actual call is GJ. This is the long that we have. It's a swing idea. Remember, TP1 is down here. At this point, we'd move stops to break even. TP2 is right here. And then TP3 is the overall swing move. Um, we have an opposite idea on NU. So NU would be a short idea. So if NU starts to reject here, we're gonna go short on that. And then a couple other ideas, you know, USEF, UCAD, GJ. So I'll post all the analysis uh in the chat guys and we'll get that going and uh the rapid signals will be putting out some trades it was a trade given earlier today that went fucking went crazy so let's just pull this up we got we got analysis out the wazoo in this fucking telegram <laughs> yeah, <dude. laughs> holy shit you guys want analysis that's the place to be yeah if you guys want trade ideas let me know we got them and they're free yeah let's let's see I'm share again, my, that. analysis up to wazoo man share my share my screen again so yeah this was the trade that was given out euro nzd four hour signal one or two risk reward smashed well below so it even went uh it went to 2.5 risk reward at this point 
this is the channel rapid signals you know there was some other trade there's a ton of trades that are given given out in here but we had when was that one given out what was it euro nzd there are guys if you need if you need a trade at some point in your life this this is the place to grab it all right, so your NZD, this was given out. As you can see, it was a four-hour idea. So this was a swing trade. This one was actually given out last week. So if you all were holding this for that long, it ended up hitting. We had a bunch of trades given out earlier today. We'll be posting the results, how all of them played out. Uh, we just summarized the results for June, and everything's verified with FX book. So we'll be getting that out to you guys. Um, there's a sale going on for it today, 20% uh, off. So it's $40. It'll be done at the end of today. If you want to join, the link to join is in the Telegram. Um, so just go to the pinned message at the top of the Forex League Telegram, which is this one. So just go to the pinned message at the top. I have to actually unpin this right here. You just go into signals, and then that's how you get involved. So that's pretty much it for the session. Like Nick said, we'll be back, what, Friday. We'll go over all the analysis. Hope you guys enjoy the week, and uh, thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Peace, guys. Peace out, everybody. Go on. You have a good one. Go, GU.